Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And I don't really like how we came from this to this. So let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. All right, so today we will have a bit of a more talking episode because I just wanted to show you my thoughts on where the UC industry is heading. So I'll mention nine areas where I think that the UCs are going the wrong way. So first up, let's start with speed. And the Emotion V13 is the perfect example to that. And I've seen that over the years, you know, riders have been very excited about speed. I have been really excited about this, about speed. I came to terms that this is not really the right way to go about it because when you think about it speed is just dangerous i mean you don't even need to think about it it's it's a fact the point that manufacturers like emotion are trying to use speed as marketing and as something to appeal to a range of riders is i think in general just not a good direction we came from vehicles like those the kingsong 16x which goes 50 kilometers an hour which is perfectly enough in the city and even outside of the city if you want to go faster, there's motorcycles. And if you have a motorcycle, you need a license for it. The motorcycle needs to be registered. It needs to be tested. And this is just not. I think the faster the UCs will be heading, the quicker it will be more difficult to ride them because they will just have an appeal of being too fast toys rather than actually valid modes of transportation that are a perfect suit for the city and outside of the city. I think that in general, speeds of 50 kilometers an hour are enough for the city. Having headroom up to 60 or 70 like the Sherman Max makes you go 50 even at a lower battery state. And that's fine, that's valid. But having a 140 kilometer an hour free spin speed, 90 kilometers an hour where, you know, anyone can pick this up and just go right there. It's not just about the safety of the rider. It's about the safety when this thing crashes. Like, it's not as dangerous as a car because, you know, cars are the most lethal weapons right now. Uh, well, except to, for actual weapons. This is still a projectile at those speeds. And then they unlock the speed to 100 kilometers an hour like what's the point of that like can, you can do it on a track you can do it on a drag strip but having the speed in a city i think is really excessive and then not having enough torque is even worse i'm criticizing emotion particularly for that because it's a company that adv advocates for safety and doing that i think is the exact opposite of, of that i don't like where this is heading i think uc should go up to 50 top 60 kilometers an hour uh, for trail use city use etc etc and you can you should go even slower if the situation is like that there's lots of traffic you can see someone just jumping out the, behind a corner etc etc so 20 going 20 25 30 is also per perfectly valid all right, let's move to the second point. All right, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is price. EUCs are getting ridiculously expensive. And a couple of years ago, there were many entry-level EUCs and you could just get into the sport, figure out what you like, and just not spend a bunch of money on it. Now you have EUCs for 4,600 euro or 4,500, lots of EUCs for 3,000, 3,500 euro. And I'm asking like, where is the entry level? And a lot of those cheaper wheels, like this Kingsong 16X, are wheels that were developed years ago, like three years ago, four years ago, like a Kingsong 18L, that's even five maybe years ago. So the problem becomes that you have old wheels, which doesn't, doesn't sound so appealing anymore because, well, they were not developed in recent time. But actually, sometimes that's even a good thing because companies tend to uh, just make mistakes later on. Anyways, the point is that when I came into the sport, which was like four years ago, there was the Gotway MSX, which still, I don't apl applaud Gotway, but there was a choice of a wheel that cost around 1500 euro to 2000. You could get a V10F, which was a lot more newer back then. Now it's already old uh, for 1000. 200, 300 euro. You could get a Kingsong 16X, also cheaper than now, but of course we have inflation and all the prices go up. My point is that all of those companies develop big wheels, the V13, the Sherman S, 
uh, they develop, you know, big bigode wheels or big veteran wheels. And then the smaller market of non-suspension smaller wheels or even suspension smaller wheels just doesn't exist so much anymore. We have the Kingsong S22, which is still 35 kilos, so it's heavy. They announced the S19, which will be lighter at 31. But there isn't really anything developed between 20 and 25, which would appeal to a lot of users. It's a lot easier to ride on a lighter wheel. It's easier to start on it. It's easier to brake. It's easier to turn. It's easier to lift it upstairs. Weight just, the, or the lack of it, brings a lot of benefits to the wheel. And while I do like the stability of the V13, when I ride my Sherman Max, which has lower foot plates and is a lot smaller, or even the Kingsong 16X, I feel a lot more in control, especially at lower speeds, and it just becomes so much of so much more of a practical device. You know, Serge? I think I'm the friendliest rider when I'm on the Sherman Max. Why? Because it's like the easiest to stop and like to balance. Yeah, 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 really. Like if you're on this, I feel like you could be less friendly more often. So please, you see companies, can you make something lighter? Can you innovate? Can you make something that has still good performance, good battery life, but just doesn't weigh as much as a motorcycle? Just to note, it's cool that you also developed that, but don't forget about this. The next thing I wanted to talk about is maybe partially true because there is some creativity in the UC game. In some areas, I think there's a general lack of creativity. Number one, chargers. Why do we still get those heavy things? Let me show you a light charger. Okay, I'll just wait until they pass through. We can wait, you can go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Hey. Woo! Okay, good. <laughs> this is the Emotion V13 charger. It weighs 1.5 kilograms. It is heavy, it is loud, it has a fan, and it's not adjustable. Granted, it is, what, 5 amps, so it charges the V13 relatively fast, but still not fast enough, I think, for a wheel that costs so much. This charges it in, what, we have 630 watts, so, like, six-ish hours, five-ish hours, something like that. While here, I have a charger from, a, from Serge's friend, and this charger weighs 600 grams with, uh, with, with the cables. It is adjustable five or nine amps. It's 100 volts, so for a different wheel. How come we just get this heavy stuff that is annoying to wear in a bag and we don't get any innovation like this, which is a small, nice, portable device, which is more quiet. It is adjustable, so you can charge the wheel slow and fast. And nine amps in this small box is actually quick. The next thing that is annoying me is that all suspension wheels have sliders. As we've seen, there's problems with all kinds of sliders. The Kingsong S22 has a whole fiasco with sliders. Why are there no wheels that have just ball bearing swing arms? Third thing, all of the foot plates are folding. While it is very cool that foot plates are, you know, folding and make the UC smaller, I mean, I think there should be some benefit also in fixed foot plates and just building some sort of shell around those foot plates, making it more like a motorcycle or a jet ski. All of the construction, especially with L hangers and then the chassis, looks pretty similar. And I think with fixed foot plates, maybe it will be easier to do jumps. Maybe it would be more sturdy. Maybe it would be also more durable and reliable. The foot plates wouldn't break off. The fourth thing, which is just a basic idea off the top of my head, and this will be the last idea I wanted to mention in this video, because come on, manufacturers, you can also think by yourself. Just make a built-in charger. Like how hard hard can it be? The 9 Bot Max has it. Why can't we just travel with a cord instead of this heavy thing, which let's, let's face it, nobody will travel around with this and just charge it somewhere on the go. You will either buy a AliExpress charger or a charger from your distributor, which is faster and the same weight. So yeah, can you just please get a bit more creative? You see manufacturers. And please also post it in the comments below what ideas you have for you see stuff. The next thing I wanted to talk about is that sometimes, I mean, not always, but sometimes, well, I know it's a bit arbitrary. Um, there's a tendency in the UC manufacturers to not learn. 
For example, King Song has been doing batteries with shrink wrap for years. Now their S22 doesn't have it, which leads to more danger when there's any sort of water ingress in their wheels. In this one, I can roast King Song quite a bit because recently they just came up with a bunch of really unthinkable things that just make me show that maybe they, they just don't ride their wheels. They came up with the King Song 16X new edition or whatever uh, and it has pads which are symmetrical and they're like the opposite way around like this is how a pad looks like this is how a pad looks like and then they go out with the s19 which have fixed pads which you know for some riders it's cool because they have a built-in solution but for riders that want to have a choice to put different pads on maybe it will be just difficult to put anything else on so the thing is very simple just put on a flat surface on the side of the wheel so then you can either buy additional stock um, side pads from the manufacturer or you just buy 3d printed pads or any sort of pads that you want to use on a wheel and with a flat surface you can do it but apparently with the s19 it doesn't seem to be like it next thing is foot plates like we still get foot plates like from in motion or from king song and i think recently the good be good foot plates as well even the veteran foot plates they don't have screw in studs like i think big now doesn't have them because before they had and then something changed well it's big good so i don't know i i'm not in the subject right now i'll reevaluate that in a bit but anyways from in motion king song and veteran we have milled in studs new no! no god no god please no 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 we have learned it as riders you need studs that are screw in or just get grip tape like you have on the older foot plates so in some areas there's just a tendency not to learn uh, on mistakes we had problems with mosfets before uh, we had problems with certain manufacturers of motors at this moment i don't have more examples but please post your examples down in the comment section below manufacturers please reevaluate things reevaluate things a lot before actually putting out a product. Now, I know it's difficult to make a new product. Just give it a bit more thought. Just listen a bit more to riders across the world. Right, the fifth thing I wanted to talk about is the CQ constant, which is the cheap quality constant. And it is basically shaped like a sinusoidal thing. I, I don't remember much math from, uh, from school, but you, know, you get the point. Quality of product and Iterate. Okay, so in this axle you have quality of the product and in this axle you have frame of time. So this is like the cycle of the product. So first we start from here. Um, we have a EUC which is sort of good quality but also sort of good price. And then we go up with the quality because people are complaining. So then we are at this point, the quality is great, people are satisfied. And what do the manufacturers say then? This is too expensive, we need to save more money. So then we go woo, down and we go down and people are super dissatisfied at this point. Uh, it is cheaper. The AUC manufacturers earn more money, but then the product just fails all the time. So then we are at the, at the bottom and then the AUC manufacturers go, oh, wait, wait, no, 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 we'll fix it. We'll do the recalls. We'll put on more motors, new motors. We'll change the MOSFETs. We change the board. We change the sliders. And then the satisf satisfaction and the quality of the product goes up again. And then we're up at this point, people are happy, it's great. And then the boss says, Well, it's too expensive, we need to earn more money, we need to change for cheaper parts, we need to have bigger margins to earn more money. And what happens then? Quality goes down, people are dissatisfied, and so on and so on. I would love to break the cycle by just staying with something that works. You just you don't even have to make it better. Just leave it as is if it works. Don't make the parts cheaper. Don't change suppliers for worse ones and investigate before you actually do something. Next part. All right, so the sixth thing I wanted to talk about is torque and I don't like where particularly emotion is heading with, uh, with torque because torque is what gives you the most fun on a wheel. The more torque, the more amps the controller pushes at lower speeds, the easier it will be to translate leaning into acceleration. And also the smaller the wheel, the easier it will be. And the thing is that with this wheel, it's just so difficult 
to break, especially if you're a rider, lighter rider. If you're heavier, it will be easy for you. Torque is what makes the wheel also just safe in the first place because the more torque, not only the more acceleration, but also the more, the better you can break. So I don't like where Emotion particularly is heading with a super high speed wheel that doesn't have altogether that much torque. This small thing, this small bastard right there has more torque at low end than the Emotion V13. Now the perfect thing is to have both, to have speed and to have torque, like for example, the veteran Sherman Max. But I didn't see this to be a priority at uh, Emotion and Kingsong recently. Now they fixed it with the S22 Pro, but please manufacturers, you need to realize that torque is what keeps us safe, is what makes off-road more fun, hill climbing, easier to ride, and I know that it's great and much better, much more appealing to make a faster wheel for the marketing and also for uh, the American riders to have higher speeds at, on, on streets. But inevitably, it's more dangerous. And I think that torque is where we should strive to with UCs. The seventh thing I wanted to talk about is material choice. And it's just very important to choose materials that work. We are so sick of using screws that rust. We are sick of using bolts that break, threads that break, trying to open motors with a freaking heat gun because otherwise it's not possible to get a screw out. We're just sick of things that constantly break just because of the material choice. Foot plates that break, foot plate hangers that fall off, bending rims, breaking rims, trolley handles start to get jiggly. The low quality of plastic that makes, for example, the inner shell uh, break, just to make, make a few examples. Just design things that work in the long run. And if you actually use those things in the long run, we want to have customer support and we want to have availability of parts. With the <laughs> for example, with the Ninebot Z10, you bought it a couple years ago and now there's no parts for it. You want to service the BMS? Good luck. You want to change a tire? Well, now you have a piece of technology that you bought for hard-earned money years ago and now you're screwed because there's just nothing available for it and you lose the ability to use your vehicle and your vehicle also loses money. And particularly also with Bigod that makes new vehicles more often than, I don't know, how often is it? What would you compare it to? How much do you take a day? <laughs> More often than I use the toilet every day. It's just impossible to have those vehicles supported in the long run. You buy it today for three, four thousand euro, and then a couple years later, you just can't service it. Kingsong and Emotion are a lot better with those things, and even Leeperkin. First of all, use good materials and then support those riders when they have a broken bar board, when they have a motor or like a non-typical tire or BMS used in their wheel, because we still want to use our wheels, even if they're three, four, five years old. The eighth thing I wanted to talk about is safety. And safety for all manufacturers should be the highest priority. And Bigode now even listen to that, making their charge ports, I don't know if on all of their wheels, but on their 134 volt wheels, cold and just adding more protection adding a actual smart bms would be amazing in general just improving the battery safety the waterproofing water resistance of course you know general use of materials this sort of ties in together with the uh, prior points use of good lighting use of good electronics we actually care about this and this is the most important we don't want to fall off from our wheels we want to have a product that is safe because we keep it in our homes, we charge it in our homes, and we use it in all weather, unless you live in Southern California. All right, and the last thing I wanted to talk about is actually something I already talked about before, so I don't really know if this point is very valid. It's weight, but let's also include size to it. The great benefit of EUCs when they came out is that they're small, you can leave them anywhere, it's easy to pick them up, it's easy to store them somewhere, and by making them bigger and heavier, you might just make it more difficult. But I, I think I got this point already across before. Uh, so in total, um, let me know what you think about those things. Uh, do you think this would be a good path um, for UCs to not go the way of speed and heavy and expensive and ex instead making them safe, torquey, accessible and not that fast? So I'm curious what you think about it. Uh, let me know what you think about the video. And if you're still here, 
leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I talked for ages here and I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Uh, I definitely should have gone to a barber shop. Anyways, a little postscriptum uh, inspired by Raphael Surchen. Cheers to you. Uh, I wanted just to say that it's not all bad with UC companies. And this video was just to sort of make a bit of a wake up and show, you know, some of the bad directions that um, UC companies have been making. But there have been also good stuff. Uh, there has been good stuff happening. So let me know if I should make a video about that. Uh, you know, um, thicker axles, better wiring, more safety, more introduction of, you know, smart BMS is just to name um, a few things. So... Yeah, just so you don't get the idea that it's all bad. It's uh, good and bad at the same time. And I want to highlight the bad so we get rid of it quicker. So yeah, cheers to that. No, not cheers to that. Just wanted to let you know about that. <laughs>